Hello, everyone. Welcome to another podcast. Today, I'm joined by Theo and Andrew. And today, we're going to talk about why some Christian social media influencers are so popular. And what you're seeing here is one of them. His name, all of some of you should know him. His name is What Do You Meme? And uh, he's part of the David Wood squad. And he has 312,000 subscribers with 487 videos. He gets a lot of views, and we want to dissect why people like him get a lot of views, because unfortunately, when young Christians look at him, they think this is how it's supposed to be, that they having such high numbers must mean they're doing the will of the Father. But is that really true? Well, we're going to find out today. So, as I said, I'm joined by Theo and Andrew. How are you guys doing? We're good, we're good. Doing good, doing great. Thank you. Awesome. So I will start off by giving my assessment of this topic. And uh, we're going to start in John chapter 6. In fact, no, John chapter 3 at verse 11. Now, some context to this. This was when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, one of the Pharisees that snuck in to speak to Jesus late at night. And uh, Jesus says this to Nicodemus in verse 11. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. Now, I've mentioned this before, that some of the watchmen are full of speculations, and they ride the wave of uh, mainstream media, Right? And they will say, hey, I'm a watchman, I must do this. Yes, you should do it. But when you start speculating to come to false conclusions, well, now you're hurting everybody and you're giving us false expectations that end up hurting people's faith, right? Hurting people's walk. So when we look at one of the videos here on what do you mean, such as the the most recent one, where he talks about Logan Paul can't stop hearing about Jesus. Now, what my assessment of this, right, is that people like, what do you mean, ride the wave of mainstream media. They ride the wave of everything trending. And they say they are deconstructing all the trends in order to edify us. Well, technically speaking, from my understanding, we should be going the opposite direction. Because when you put us on the boat that is going along with the world and you want to tell us, hey, we're on this boat because one, two, and three, it's happening. Well, it's not very edifying because all you're doing is just making it easy for people to just come to the same conclusion as real false Christians. Even Joel Olstein can pick up on a few false things Logan Paul is guilty of, Right. Even Joel Olstein can tell you that the transgender movement is ridiculous, right? So if you can have heretics deconstruct something so apparently complicated, which is not, the transgender movement is messed up, then what, how is it that you have shown yourself approved, that you have studied the Bible, right? And that now you have greater wisdom to offer to the brethren, when all you're doing is just riding the same wave Ben Shapiro is riding, but you just have Christian lingo. So this is my basic uh, problem of Christians like this, these popular ones on social media with all the hundreds and thousands of views. I mean, just here's another example, such as a controversial topic. Married men need porn, right? A controversy sparked by Jordan Peterson and Dennis Prager, right? We all know that Jordan Peterson is a lost individual. He doesn't know. He was questioned, hey, do you believe Jesus actually rose from the dead? He couldn't answer the question, right? Dennis Prager of Prager University jacked in the head. Their doctrine, they don't even have a doctrine, right? And so when you make videos like this just to talk or commentate on people's obvious, obvious delusions and confusions. How is it 
fully empowering the brethren. Because if you're going to empower the brethren, you must go into Bible, deconstruct Bible, right? And come to valid biblical conclusions within Bible. This, unfortunately, I don't see it as um, edification at all. But now I'll move it on to Theo and uh, Andrew. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Theo, you want to go first or me? It doesn't matter. There. You, oh, you want to go? Okay, uh, sure. Well, first of all, it, absolutely, Muzzy, you're speaking the truth. Praise God. And there's one minor, little minor, uh, where I, a minor point I disagree. Uh, you said they don't have doctrine. No, uh, Dennis Prager and Jordan, all these people, they have, they have their doctrine. Oh, yeah. No, their, their doctrine is their little God, which is their vain imagination and their philosophy. Their, their doctrine, their dogma, their creed, right. all of these are the, it, and if we could look at uh, Colossians and go to Colossians real quick, Colossians chapter 2, and Muzzy, you're right, they don't have doctrine of the Bible, I know it's, that's what you meant, I should say that, right, they don't have any doctrine according to the word of God, so they, they have their creeds, mm -hmm. and in Colossians, let me flip over to Colossians real quick. Uh, chapter 2, verse 8. Colossians, chapter 2, verse, verse 8. Mm -hmm. This is powerful. It says, beware. That is a severe warning. Lest any man spoil you. And spoil you, it does not mean make rotten. No, that means taken as booty as in warfare and that's by taken by satan as as a as a as a prize in war he's got your soul through philosophy philosophy is man's wisdom and that's jordan peterson that's uh prager i know prager university uh, he's a zionist he's out of he's whacked in the head uh and that jordan peterson is a brilliant brilliant was he a psych? Uh, 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 he's a, a psychologist, philosopher, orator. Uh, waxes eloquently, but he's a lost, pathetic man. And he looks up Jesus left and right, but he doesn't know Jesus Christ. But he they use philosophy, and then vain. Vain means worthless. Deceit. Deceit means lies. After the tradition of men, that's their creeds and their little belief systems, after the rudiments of the world, and that means the rules of the world, and not after Christ. And who sets the rudiments of this world? Who sets the rudiments of this world? That is the devil himself, and all of these people are God's little children. Uh, correction, are the, are the the devil's little children who they say are God's, all of God's little children. No. No, they're not God's little children because they've chosen, they've made a willful determination in their heart in Romans 8, chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 32, it's clear. They've chosen their own path. They've rejected the truth. They've instead chosen their own path, their own religion, their own philosophy, and not after Christ. And who is this little God of this world, the Prince of the Air? Well, if we read John, if we go to the book of John, chapter 14, John chapter 14, mm -hmm. verse 30, it says, John 14, 30, hereafter... I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and had nothing in me. Amen. That prince of this world is the devil himself. Oh, the devil's not real. Yeah, yeah, right. You keep They keep telling you that, right? These universalists like that perverted, reprobate, heretic, 
Rodney Bellow and his kind are telling people, oh, don't worry, hell's not real. Uh -huh. mm. And so this is the devil. And in Paul's writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, we go there, hold on, let me flip open, I got, I got, I had my, save, my, I had the wrong place saved, but uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, Paul makes it very clear who the, who this prince of the world is, he calls him the little G God, right, and let's read together, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, in whom the God, little g, God, mm -hmm. in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. That's right. That's Jesus Christ. He is the fullness of the Godhead body, bodily. He's the only person. There's not three persons walking around, but that's a different subject for a different day. So, yeah, yes, sir, Muzzy, you've nailed a very sensitive subject. De the devil, Satan, known as Lucifer, when he was kicked out of the third heaven, he, he has this world. He controls the economy. He controls the politics. He controls the entertainment. And, and he controls the religions, plural. Even, no, not Christianity. No, don't say that, that, that he controls these Christian church buildings. Uh, yes, he does. And he controls our seminaries. He controls our schools of divinity. He, and don't believe me, I wish John Dr. Hinton could sit here on this conversation. The man graduated from Harvard University. Uh, the school of divinity was, he got his master's degree, went on, got his Ph.D., he said all, A-L-L, -L, of his professors were agnostic or atheists. He said he saw demonic manifestations in Harvard left and right, backwards and forwards, up and down. Mm -hmm. My deceased son was in Fuller Theological Seminary, and I saw him go from a King James reading. He was a believed in grace, not works. By grace we're saved by faith, through faith to workspace, to who knows what. So, no, let me tell you, in, in my son's books and theology from Fuller Theological Seminary, he would read me excerpts from his textbook, and I would yell, I would scream, I would cry, I would throw things, I would pick up furniture, and I said, get out of there. I said, what you just read me is not only heretical, not only is that heretical, that's blasphemous. They're actually questioning the divinity of jesus christ he goes he said quote yeah i know it's terrifying but i got to get this paper i got to get this degree so i can have a 501c3 church he didn't say 501c3 but 501c3 you have to have the credentials so where am i, am I and then i'm going to shut my mouth here but where i'm going with this all of the devil's children as jesus told the pharisees in john 8 42 through 40 47 he said, the reason you do not know the truth is because the truth is not in you, but you are as your father, the devil, who is a liar and a murderer, a murderer from the beginning. So they can't know the truth. Ben Shapiro is a very pious, holy Jew who embraces the Judeo-Christian values because he knows his base, but he has no idea who Jesus Christ is, does not want to know. Mm -hmm. So, and now these YouTubers, these massive influencers, if they've got millions or hundreds of thousands of followers, they're reprobating the faith. The devil's not going to let one of his, one of God's children thrive in his world. Are you serious? I so, mean, uh, yeah. quick question. What would you say to those who might be calling us jealous of somebody like, what do you mean that, hey, you guys don't have a lot of subscribers. You're saying all these things because you're jealous. What would be an appropriate answer to such a person? Yes, uh, I've had uh, Amir Tisafati freaks, little zombies, many, many times, 20, 30, 40, 50 hate mails saying, hey, you're just jealous. I'm like, what? Jealous? 
I couldn't care less. I'm a good capitalist. If the man wants to run his scammy little tour group in Israel, fine, that's okay. Overpriced tour group, that's fine. It's his business. But then he says he's a Christian and runs a Christian. Yeah, he tells his followers not to call themselves Christian. But then he runs, he puts God in it because he knows that God sells. And that's when I go after him and they say I'm jealous. Now, I've, I've had a low-informed, he was a not very mature in Christ. He's like saying, you've got to, you've got to get, I'm praying that God gives you millions of subscribers. You've got to get more. You've got to have more. And I'm like, God forbid. You know, don't even, you don't know what you're saying. We don't, I don't, I'll never get millions of followers. But if I do, I'll be terrified because then that means I'm feeding them what they want to hear. And that means that Satan is promoting me. And I'm telling the truth. We don't, we're going to only going to get the ones and twos. So what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree, agree, agree. All right, Theo. What's your assessment of these so-called super popular Christians on social media? Uh, with me, if, if I had to analyze in terms of that whole, um, it's like, I'm, I'm trying to find the correct words. It's like, um, you know when you get these right-wing uh, politicians who speak, it's almost like different right? But they represent one uh, person. It's like, yeah, they represent one message. So you find the lukewarm Christians, and then you will find these Christians who are exposing the other Christians, right? But yet they change um, the doctrine itself. They edit the doctrine mm -hmm. already against what if, if you yeah, it's already against what the Lord says in general. So I was looking for a scripture here. Um, Proverbs chapter 30 verse 5 to 6. Okay. So tell me when you're there. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 5. Okay. Here. Okay. Got there. Every, yes. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto this word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. So, these people are liars their whole lives, and they always twist the word to their own benefit, right? Notice how, if I had to make an example, if you are a real Christian, you're never going to grow in subscribers because the doctrine does not tickle the ears. It's like a song, right? So if you had to look at the numbers, you ask, why would you have so many numbers? That means in some way your doctrine is tickling the ears, right? Mm. It is not aligned to God himself. And I did find a bit of a video, yeah, that I wanted to share. Um, it's pretty much like a small part. It's like a judgment day sort of thing. And this is a uh, pastor. Do you mind if I play it? How long is it? It's like a few minutes. It's just him. Uh, it's like probably like three minutes of that specific part. But I will find okay. when the uh, important part comes. Okay. I pray and touch your word. I devoted my life to your cause. Yeah, I'll do this. Can you increase the volume? in itself as much as you are able to differentiate between these different pastors right but again it's like 
oh, I'm exposing so and so. It's like, you have to simplify it. It's like the Democrats exposing the Republicans, but yet they have one team, right? And I've noticed this. Yeah, absolutely. The devil will use um, so-called different atmosphere, different spheres, right? Pretty much spread the thing you say can be like, no, these people are actually different. No, it's like, for example, the seven-day worshippers are this sort of church, the Catholics, they are different in their ways. They might be different, but if you look deep down in the core, they are the same. So these two different types of churches might seem different, but they're actually the same. So it's a deception that the devil has put upon the earth, right? Making them people think that, oh, this doctrine is correct because they're exposing these people. They have a bit of doctrine. Remember also the demons and the devil knows how to twist scripture, right? So they twist scripture in a way so that people will fall for this trap. If it was one way, it was going to be, it's going to be a bit more difficult to trick the masses. Hence why he pretends like he's causing division, but he knows he's leaving more people closer to Satan. He's being away from the Lord even more and more. You know, so one doctrine, uh, grace, the, the whole grace, prosperity, might not be as cutthroat as this sort of doctrine as these pastors. But at the end of the day, they preach the same thing, and they twist the Lord's words, right? So, and some of them don't even qualify to be pastors in general. So as a real Christian, you're never going to grow because you are reading God's word. And that's how I see these pastors. I see them, they are all the same. Deep down, you will find similarities. That's how I see them. All right. If I can, mm -hmm. hey, uh, Muzzy, can I interject something super fast here? Mm -hmm. Would it be, is it okay? Or do yeah, we, I can add, is this, okay. What Theo just said, let me triple t I can't stress enough, amen, 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 to what he said. Uh, him putting Proverbs 30 out there, uh, 4 and 5, uh, excuse, correction, uh, 5, 6, and 7. Do you know that I recently dealt in the Lord on a recorded, this recording, the Lord doesn't give me liberty to go into details, but a recently a so-called Christian is getting a huge quintessential existence of evil national broadcasting company to promote his book. Now, why do you think that happened? Well, he is going to be, and I warned this person that the words that he's using, he, he's going to get reproved. He's found a liar because in his perverted Bible, and that's why I'm saying we've got to use the King James Bible as the final authority because they could even be preaching the truth, but if they're not in the King James, but using perverted Bible translations, the devil loves that. And then on a final note, what, what uh, Theo was saying, you won't believe this, but John Hinton, who, like I said, this guy from Harvard, he has proof that the Catholicism is stems from Hinduism and all of the new per uh, perverted churches, they will speak against the Catholic doctrine and dogma, it's called Hegelian dialectic, good cop, bad cop, like John MacArthur, the king daddy of all these conservatives. He's always calling other churches out in their perversions, but he, guess what? He's just as fallen in his doctrine and dogma, and people stumble after it. So great call, Theo. Great call. Indeed. Great point. Um, so can we say that people like what do you mean and these popular Christians, it's obvious their doctrine is messed up and they are not actually edifying the church. As I mentioned that, yes, they just follow and report on what Ben Shapiro's crowd reports. If a Christian makes similar videos to Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro, and uh, Matt Walsh, which is a deep, and not even Charlie, deeper, and but on and on and on. And on and on and on it goes. How is it that you're not set apart? I mean, how is it that you are set apart? Because you're no different. 
I mean, at the end of the day, if Ben Shapiro, a proud Jew who hates Christ, can say the same thing of, hey, uh, this transgender stuff, it makes no sense. Even an African witch doctor here would say the same thing. So reporting on things of the world that create controversy to sell new newspapers, to drive traffic to uh, articles, to drive traffic to YouTube videos, you're not actually doing the work here. You're not. And others will say, hey, uh, remember the body of Christ is of different members. One can be the hand, one can be the eyes. Maybe people like, what do you mean are the eyes? They see the dysfunction in the world and they commentate on it. Well, first of all, whatever member you are, all of you should have eyes to see. You should have discernment already. And if the witch doctor in the bushes of Africa can call out the transgender, then we're in big trouble if we're going to need supernatural help to use common sense, right? So that alone is not enough. It's actually uh, spitting on the Lord's power and on the Lord's requirement of what we should be doing. So now, if we were to commentate on what, what you mean ought to be doing, right, what would you guys say? I'll, I'll give what I personally think. Number one, I would say you need to use more Bible uh, in your videos, Mr. What Do You Mean? Because all you're doing, what you're doing is nothing but just news reports. News reports of the obvious, and it's controversial, so automatically drives traffic. And there is no, there is no double-edged sword here that cuts the bone marrow of the viewer. A viewer who's an atheist who disagrees with the transgender movement will agree with you. If you're not cutting down those who are living in lies, living in debauchery, living in filth, you're not, you're not doing anything. Right? You're not even sharing or spreading seeds at all. You're just calling people to come have a feast as you laugh and mock at those who, yes, are dumb. But what good is that? Right? So I would say include Bible that requires or that does cut the viewer even. That does make the viewer examine himself. Right? and laid back on the controversial videos because clearly if it's always controversy which scrolling here it's majority controversy Andrew Tate uh, he's very controversial AOC looking crazy all these figures that always bring about hype you use them to drive traffic to your channel and then you want to say you're out here doing the Lord's work I don't this this can't be the Lord's work. Uh, I'm sorry. It just it just it just can't be. It seems like you're just doing this, and you're making a profit off of it. What do you guys think? Yeah, absolutely. Man, amen, amen. Hmm. Okay, Andrew, you can give your uh, assessment, and then but, the, yeah. But I got I, I want to say there that you know that. Second Timothy is it second? Where is it says in Timothy where we're to avoid uh, ignorant, ignorant and foolish arguments and petty little silly, silly, goofy things. Yeah. Uh, second Timothy, hold on. I'm sorry. Uh, second Timothy two twenty three. But keep away from foolish, ignorant arguments. They cause end up causing quarrels, and and it says actually keep away. Let me get the King James. That King, that's not even King James. Hold on, let me get it my Bible here. Hold on. Yeah, but uh, while I'm looking it up in King James, but I just want to say, Amen, brother. You got to be in the Word of God, and I will add the King James because when you really study perverted Bibles, it's adding to God's Word. It perverts God's Word. It changes God's Word. Right. And Second Timothy, I found it in two twenty three, the King James Bible. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they gender strife. See, the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt teach and be patient, meekness, instruction. So, 
So, and then look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2. No man, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. These people are not striving lawfully. These people are entangling themselves with the affairs of this life. It says, no man that warreth, that means we're in warfare, baby, with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, that what? Splits and draw, it splits asunder the soul from the spirit, the bone from the marrow, the discerner of all in thoughts and hearts and tensions of the heart. So they're warring. Guess what they're doing? They're entangling themselves with the affairs of this life, and Satan loves it. Because when you get tangled up in the affairs of this life, that means you're in his little game, playing in his little sandbox. And when we do that, then we're not pleasing God. We're not pleasing our Creator. Because we're not pleasing Him to be what? Chosen to be a good soldier. And if we're doing that, if we're to strive for masteries in verse 5... That many men strive for masteries. He's not crowned except he strive lawfully. Striving lawfully. That means what? In the word of God, rightly divided, the, in studying his word, in using that word like a sword. Well, if we're in the wrong perverted Bible, or we're rambling our stupid little carnal mind, my, myself included, myself included, if I start rambling away on what I think philosophically wax on what sounds well, I think that I, my carnal mind is working and my mind is enmity against God. My vain imaginations take over. Well, my pastor said, well, my family for five generations, we've always believed our tribe, our thought theory is, no, that's not Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Agreed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um on my side as well, um, since, can I just read further in terms of second Timothy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, From sure. Chapter I mean, that's, that's okay. 25, right? It says, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God pre-eventual will give them repentance, repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, right? Um, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him and his will. So with these guys here, they are captive to elaborate in terms of uh, they do not apply to the scripture, these two verses, because they are not Christians. They're not teaching sound doctrine. Um, they out captive by the snare of the devil. They Agreed. do not preach. They do not do any of that stuff. Already in those just Second Timothy alone, they are total opposites. And looking also in his um, in his on his YouTube channel, as you mentioned, Muzi, it's all like it's pretty much like a news article. Reports, 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 reports. There's no teaching. There's no wisdom being given, yep. right? Uh, wisdom, wisdom, man's wisdom, man's wisdom, not God's. Man's, you see, man's wisdom. There is no scripture. You see, there's no nope. twisted, no scripture at all. Uh, you know, it's pretty much a show, right? It's a yeah. whole story. Hmm. You're, not, yeah. you're not feeding the flock, as Muzi said earlier. So, again, he's not amongst us. He's not amongst us. If I Great. decide to look at him, even as piercings, what does the Bible say about piercing already? And Every tattoos. Time. He doesn't mind yes. even having tattoos. So, yeah, red flag. He looks like the world. Yeah. He speaks like the world. And above all else, this is how Christian YouTubers with massive numbers get massive numbers. You look like the world. You speak like the world. You dress like them. You sound like them. Yada, 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 yada. There is nothing set apart, right? You have the same glossy, shining exterior as the devil, as Brad Pitt. And so how can, how can your words lead to 
godly sorrow. Because as Second Timothy here says that, if I read it again, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God pre-adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. There is not much acknowledgement of the truth in such videos. There isn't. There is an acknowledgement of common sense, right? And above all else, a lot of people who are against a lot of these things, it's because it's hurting your entertainment now. Now there has to be a transgender superhero in every Spider-Man movie. Now there has to be a transgender person in every office. It's hurting you personally. It's not because it's actually right or wrong. It's because you personally don't like it. And that does not mean you are one with the Lord. You don't live for the truth. You, li you live for your truth. And then at 26, verse 26 said, And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. All people, everybody who subscribed to what do you mean and people of his ilk, they already have been ensnared. You're already yep. in the devil's net. You don't even know you're there. You watch this, you deem yourself saved because you're laughing at uh, Mr. Beast's minions and Logan Paul and yada yada and giving reviews on these Bible movies that are obviously produced by jacked up people who don't even hide their evil. Yeah, right? So Yeah, you know the actor, the actor in that Jesus movie is a wearing Baphomet rings, he's a Luciferian, you know this, if you don't I've got the information. There's no way God or the devil will allow God's children to be promoting the truth. I tell you that. It's a fact. It's a fact. So Jesus Christ Superstar is all about the Antichrist. They, they hate Jesus Christ. I saw the Jesus movement. I grew up in the Jesus movement in the 1970s. I was given a perverted Bible called The Way in the Jesus movement. It's satanic. Calvary Chapel, Chuck Smith fell to Lonnie Frisbee, who was an LSD, heroin, an addict, a drug addict. He would get high and talk to Jesus. Come wow. to Jesus, get to know my Jesus. It yeah. fires me up to get angry with righteous indignation. I hate it because wow. I, I know what's going on. I see it, and you're calling it out. Thank you, Muzzy. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to add um, from John, John chapter 14 here, uh, starting at verse 26. It says, but the comforter which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said to you. Verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, when there is a huge influx of reports on how much power the trans movement is getting you know you just you're just flooding christians minds with all the filth of the world how is that going to give peace you know how is that allowing you to revert back to focus on christ right and there is no teaching even on how to on how to actually grow the fruits of the spirit because there's no sanctification that is happening in videos like this. They don't even mention it, right? You have to go under sanctification. You need to bear fruit. But what fruit can be bared when there's a bombardment of worldly news with Christian lingo? Because this is what then builds the holier-than-thou holier attitude that, hey, I'm not stupid like Andrew Tate who became a Muslim because of a retarded reason. I'm not stupid to cut my stuff off because I'm confused. It kind of, you put yourself on a pedestal and you judge yourself as decent or a good person or this or that, pretty much like a Catholic, right? You don't ex examine yourself biblically. You examine yourself worldly or uh, culturally, basically. A cultural Christian sort of examination. So... That is not fruitful. It doesn't bear fruit at all. Because inside, the corruption is still there. Whatever issues you have, you never overcome them. And you lose self-awareness. 
And when you lose that, good luck, it's pretty much over. You're only moments away from being a reprobate. So, Amen. yeah. So, if you guys have anything else to add in this topic, you can go ahead. We are close to the well, time. Well, would you, yeah, I'm real quick. Would you finish, you were on a, finish the thread there, please, Muzzy. You said, and then when you come to that point, you're basically, you come to become turned over to like a reprobate mind, right? Mm -hmm. But you left out a step that you covered so well in one of your videos, and that is despair. Right. You, could you just touch on that, brother? Because you have a firm grasp on that. Uh, right. You, you remember before the step of, I think, before the Lord lets actually someone turn over like, oh, what happened? I thought they were one of us. Uh, they left us. They're, they really weren't a Christian. They were a Judas. Um, what about that step of despair? Because you hit some very heavy-duty points there. Well, We see these reaching that point and I just wanted I think there's something to be said there right um, so such Christian popular videos they don't touch on the desperation that people are reaching now with the world turning into what it's turning into the beast system taking over and kicking people out of its jobs uh, more and more right. people are becoming desperate and yes. desperation is synonymous with despair and one, when one reaches despair and finds a so-called Christian channel like this with all these views, right. where is the comfort and yeah, in, bringing yes. awareness to why you're despairing? It's not here. Yeah. There is only a bombardment of, hey, look at what Donald Trump said. Donald Trump this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jordan Peterson that. When yeah. one gets Amen. in despair, they start thinking of taking matters into their own hands. And this is what happens also when those who, have re who are reaching a point of despair, they go into the false churches, they find Joel Osteen yep. only talking about money and sweets and having yep. a nice life. Yep. When you just lost your job, you want to Amen. tell people that, hey, my job got replaced by the AI. Joel Osteen, what's yep. going on here? Can you explain this to yep. me biblically? Am I suffering for nothing or... Or what? Is this it for me? Joe Olstein has nothing to tell you except believe and maybe one believe. day you'll make money, right? You got to press through this with your faith. Press through with your faith. Yeah, right. Exactly. Amen, Exactly. And make sure you donate or click the subscribe button. The money it's... going. If you don't keep the money flow going, you're going to, you're God, you're, you're robbing God and God, no way can God bless you. Give till it hurts. Push through, push through. Exactly. Amen. It's no different. Donate with your tithing, click the like button, make sure you share, make sure you comment, make sure you feed the algorithm that belongs to the devil to make my video more popular so despairing Christians can only find me who can't help you, but only put you in a deeper hole, a deeper hole of confusion, right? And so when one reaches despair completely and does jump off the boat, this sinking ship which is the world, all of our lives and you take matters into your own hands and you reject having faith that the Lord has a plan but not for those who view his plan from a personal protagonist syndrome basis but a grand plan for all those who are saved that this will be the outcome the, the boat will be rocky but it will fall apart before you do this is his promise to us and this is what those who are despairing need to hear but don't find on these popular YouTube guys who just want to talk about controversy. Hey, Amen. Right. Um, can I say something? Yeah. Uh, of, um, of despair, right? So one thing, especially this week, where I've noticed about young people is that they're unstable. Right? And a lot of these churches are double-minded, unstable. So the difference is now between a Christian and a heathen, these so-called churches, is that our unstableness is caused by the world. It's we are fried because of the world, but here's the difference. We get healed by the Lord as time goes by, and we become... Um, 
a straight line that sees not a long that sees bouncing up and down the Lord as the balance. But the eyes they are unstable. Okay, no, that's how you notice the double mindedness with these Christians. Mm-hmm. They don't stand for in in terms of what they speak, right? As actually spoken about in your videos. So they have created pretty much, you know, what is wrong. They pretty much you know that whole thing what COVID did, for example, shoving it down people's throats constantly, constantly, constantly. They've made it part of the mainstream, right? What is wrong has become mainstream, you know, to the point where it's normal to feel this uncomfortable. You're you're always you know you're not you're not sitting down. You're always running around because you're unstable. It's like you're these people are blessing in the whole Lord, this and this and this. It's not giving you comfort, peace. You know, you're not learning from it. You're unstable, right? It's not helping you. They do not help. So they are unstable in their faith. The fact that they're unstable in their so-called faith, right, makes them dangerous. They're double-minded. They, it's pretty much like, um, it's pretty much like, I forgot this guy's name now. John McArthur. I forgot. No, not John McArthur. We are talking about him now. Uh, what do you mean? Jordan Peterson? Breaker? No. No, no. But I forgot his name. So it it's been my... Yeah, yeah I forgot his name. Now. Been... No. That's okay. okay. Yeah. It is just... fine. Um... It's pretty much that sort of thing which causes instability amongst people in general, you know. Hence why you find them going to alcohol. It's like big videos make people worse. They do not help people. They make them worse. Hence why they will run to these churches that you mentioned, right? Hence why they run to alcohol. Hence why they run to clubs, smoke, do all the stuff. Hence why don't run, they eventually kill themselves as well. They are leading, they are breaking more souls than mending more souls. They are breaking more souls. They are chasing away more souls, killing more souls, right? Then actually bringing more uh, souls to the, um, to the flock, pretty much bringing more sheep to the flock, you know, to the protection of the shepherd. So they cause this instability in the world, which makes people double-minded, not assertive, don't, you know, which is very dangerous. They don't realize they're actually throwing a lot of souls into the lake. They're responsible of a lot of people's souls, and it's dangerous what they're doing. Those millions is going to come back to bite them on Judgment Day. That's what I have to say when it comes to that. Amen. Right. Uh, well, we are now at the end. I will say that people like this, they work for food that spoils. They don't work for food that is uh, everlasting. Because if it were the case, they wouldn't be this popular. They've cracked the algorithm. They know they have to withhold the truth and speak on controversial topics to flood the traffic and to pump out fake videos to Christians all over so they can get lost. And so, yeah, they'll pay for what they've done. But anyways, that's all for this podcast, everybody. Let us know what you think of it. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to end the recording now. Goodbye, everybody.